Another week uh, comes and goes as the Bears shed more and more tears that they're missing out, that their positions aren't working out, and that the market is going higher. Now, if you were confused this week of what you had to do, guys, I'm going to unconfuse you as quickly as humanly possible. In this video, we're going to be talking about the exact levels we gave out every single week uh, and how to navigate the market. We're going to be talking about things like selling covered calls in order to basically profit from downside potential in the markets, along with where the market could be going as we head into this Thanksgiving weekend. Hope you guys are enjoying this Sunday afternoon as we prep for the week ahead, which is only going to be a three-day trading week. Thursday and Friday, the markets will be closed observing the holiday. So make sure you guys are set ready for a three-day bonanza. We're also going to be doing a morning stream since we're both off this week and giving you guys that news as it comes live for the market open, talking about some of the positions that I have. I'll be going over some of them as well, some things that I added to the portfolio this week, what I'm looking forward to, and much more in that. So without further ado, let's dive in. What happened this week? Well, subsequently, the S&P NASDAQ and the Russell all were going higher. Now, you notice I mentioned a third name there, the Russell. I have not covered the Russell in quite some time because it was just a bore fest. However, the markets now are setting up to be very, very interesting. And the Russell is going to be an addition that we're going to be covering along with, I think, one of the most critical positions that you could play versus like the NVIDIAs, the Googles, the Metas and everything. I think the Russell is actually the gem in the rough that a lot of people aren't looking at, including like Palantir, right? Palantir, Ray Dalio recently bought them and the guy doesn't lose money. So it's going to be very, very interesting. This is the same person that shorted bonds from the top to the bottom, making huge, huge amounts of profit. And again, it's going to be a fantastic week. We also got some news catalysts coming up ahead for this week, with Wednesday being the jam-packed core PCE prices, GDP, PCE, jobless claims, everything and more. We also got Fed minutes on Wednesday as well, along with Atlanta Fed GDP. Now, so it's going to be a very, very interesting week. And again, Friday is an early close, but technically it's like the market wasn't really open. There's not a lot of volume. There's not a lot of movement. We're only going to get that net speculative positions, which are increasing in the positive. So it's a little cause for concern there. But we're going to keep you updated of what's going on with it, with fear and greed. We managed to tick still in greedy territory. So the markets are remaining greedy as we're heading higher, checking all the boxes while the bears will tell you everything possibly wrong because NVIDIA didn't go green on the week, right? NVIDIA actually had a bearish week and subsequently its earnings were fantastic, had a big wicking candle day and spooked me out of the position a little bit. However, I recovered that position and we'll be talking about what I'm looking forward to with NVIDIA as we go into the following week. Now, is it basically gonna just keep going in a straight line up? I don't actually know and I really don't care because I'm gonna profit either way. If you go straight line up, I profit from the shares. If you go straight line down, I sell covered calls and I profit from that just because I don't believe NVIDIA will be bankrupt in the next subsequent two, three years. So I can hold that position for quite some time. Also take long-term capital gains on it versus short-term capital gains. Only would have to pay the short-term gains on the share, the calls that I sell, right? Collecting that premium usually. And in other historical news, Bitcoin hit 100K officially with the high of the week being 170 thousand dollars i did say it was gonna hit 100k by q3 i sorry q2 boy it it decided to hit q4 of this year that was a fantastic move especially on bitcoin from the election so we talked about a lot of stuff oh we also mentioned that google is uh having a little bit of rough time. We'll get to that in the debate section of the video, which is gonna to be towards the end guys, where we talk about what we're looking forward in the markets. But let's dive into what the S&P and NASDAQ are setting up for this week for us as we look at the levels that we have to pay attention to and I will clean up charts and be right back for you in just a second. So as we can see here, the S&P is basically set up for a nice ranged week where we're gonna pretty much have very easy profit and loss targets. Subsequently, we're gonna be looking bullish. Why is that? Well, we only need about a dollar more before we break out bullish, which is subsequently where the profit and risk ratio is favoring, right? You only got about 0.13% to the upside where you know you're gonna be right versus having to go all almost double or triple that 
0.5 to the downside to know if you're even remotely going to be wrong. And subsequently, you're really not gonna get to be wrong until you go all the way down to 584. So that's a lot of holding your breath if you're gonna be shorting the market. Now, the risk reward there is better in the sense of like it's a larger move down to get to the lower end of the week but is there really a catalyst considering everything now if we break below 592.65 then i'd be saying yes there is a catalyst for that because we're getting subsequent to lower prices we're coming back through the gap fill that we just filled and it's actually filled quite nicely with volume so again, looking for that upside break on 565, 15 on the S&P, depending on future setup, as we will update you guys in the morning live stream for this. And subsequently the 584 breakdown, that's just gonna be basically a very low probability target. However, we will discuss that in the weekly update videos if 592.45 is broken and subsequently the nine day moving average, right? So that's really where we're looking at for the potentials to the downside. Game plan is going to be upside potential, and we're going to covering some of the bigger cap stocks in just a moment. I want to give you guys the index levels first to know, hey, what generally we need to be looking at right now. I'm saying S&P probably pushing to 600 close for the week is what I would expect, especially with the SPCE data and all that on deck. The NASDAQ is going to give you guys the early warning sign indication of where we're gonna be going. Why do I say that? Well, we're above right at the 90 moving average, subsequently with the weekly break being the gap fill. So we only filled partially the gap, but we basically stalled at it. So tech did stall because of Google, Meta, and Nvidia really putting a break on that rally. Subsequently, if those subsequent stocks rally, then we are going to push higher. We're gonna push above 506.96, and then we're gonna go all the way to 515 basically to run. I am betting currently bullish on the S&P and NASDAQ. I hold put spreads in order to basically take advantage of that credit depreciation and probably will roll them if we go above 506.96. And if we go down below her, I can always defend those positions for short-term bearishness while the long-term bearish bullish trend stays intact. So the NASDAQ is gonna be our key point. Do we start breaking this low right here of about 502? And if we do, then okay, we start looking at some of those bearish scenarios. Again, I will update you guys in the weekly update video that usually comes out on Tuesday. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel to know when that comes out and also when the live streams are gonna be so you're notified of that. Make sure you guys come chat, ask your questions. It'd be a grand EOS old time. So 506 is going to be the rotationary bullish point that we're gonna be looking at, only a dollar, right? Coincidentally, S&P and NASDAQ are both a dollar away. Very, very low percentages to have bullishness, especially when Mondays are traditionally more bullishness recently that I've noticed, and we're heading into the Santa Claus rally phase of the market. And why am I so, so like flipping the script from bearishness to bullishness is because of the Russell. The Russell actually had a banger week, and it's also above 539. 24, which is a subsequent weekly break. Again, all these indexes are when a dollar striking point of their weekly breakouts, which is really sending the risk to reward, yes, to the downside, but the probability to the upside, right? So we want to base ourselves on the side of probability because, yeah, I can make a million dollars going down, but the probability is like 0 0.00001. So am I really going to get that? Well, the market kind of will teach you no. So subsequently, if we break below five, uh, 232.75, which is again, 90 moving average, gap fill previous rotation on the Russell, and it's also the gap up point that we defended previously that we broke through this week, is going to be one of those things I'm gonna be looking at specifically. And also it was a very, very nice buying opportunity once we got that first green candle on the 18th, and subsequently it's just been pounder hour. Now, Tom Lee has said, we're gonna get a 40% rally in the Russell, I could definitely see a 40% rally over the subsequent next year. This has been the lagging indicator for quite some time. And I think the IWM is gonna be a fantastic way for you to take advantage of massive, massive appreciation. And you pretty much know where you're gonna be wrong and right because the capitulation areas are pretty staunch on the chart, right? Previous all-time high rotation, right? If we go back to, let's say the weekly chart, just to see, you're right at that all-time high rotation point around that 230 number. So really knowing bullish or bearish is pretty self-evident on the chart. And also we have previous high areas that we can go off of, right? This 228, again, 230, 228 is gonna be the line in the sand for the Russell that we don't wanna really see be reprinted if we're gonna get that bullish appreciation this time. 
And also looking at some of the other indicators before we jump into to the big tech stocks is the VIX, right? The VIX looking like it consolidated, wants to come back down to this $12 area. I'm still gonna hold VIX calls just because of any bad news that can occur. I would basically take um, profit from that, right? You wanna have that insurance for peace of mind is why I'm basically looking to be bullish. I can basically be more bullish because I know I have an insurance policy in place. If you guys wanna know more about that, jump over to the live stream on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday so we can talk about it live with you as you throw it in the chats. And now, the moment we all been waiting for, the big index companies. Let's start off with the king, none other than Apple. Apple kind of consolidated around the 50-day moving average, actually found a nice region of support and has been consolidating for quite some time. So I do expect Apple to finally break out of this consolidating coil and a break to the upside would push the S&P higher, push the Nasdaq higher, bring it along the ride, a lot of these tech stocks and subsequently why I'm playing bullish on Apple. If we look, jump over to number two, Microsoft has just been struggling in this area. However, it has not really formed a lower low and it's mainly forming a wedge basically right here that we're looking to break out pretty soon out of. So subsequently, if we get more bullish appreciation like we're expecting, this is the one I keep an eye on for discount opportunities because we are on the bottom side of the wedge. So if we break down in Microsoft, breaking the, essentially below 410, 405, then I'd be looking for that downwards potential in the market to start fruition and also to see if Google, right? Google having its bad news catalyst is holding that 200 day moving average right now. It did not hold the 50 on Friday, but it did hold it on Thursday. So, so there works finding buyers where we expect to find buyers. So subsequently, Google could be at a discounted point. Same way with Nvidia, right? Nvidia coming back to this previous all time high rotation around four, $140 and 76 cents and holding it. So right now we're previous resistance has become the support and subsequently we're accumulating in this area. This is definitely an area I'd be accumulating in and looking to ride this thing higher. I could easily see Nvidia by a year's end at 160 considering the bullishness and Santa Claus rally that we could see, right? Just a subsequent uptrend into the end of the year, 165, 170 would not be a far out price target. So make sure you guys keep an eye on that one, right? And if, let's say you're not a big uh, fan of NVIDIA, AMD has had a massive, massive downside and is looking to maybe have formed a bottoming pattern here. And subsequently, I would keep my eye on AMD for to know like, hey, if you don't wanna play NVIDIA, you wanna play AMD, there's more upside in AMD, that definitely could be on your bucket list. And last but not least, Meta and Amazon just going sideways. Meta actually having a bit of a downtrend below the 50, but still holding. Again, you don't want to break the low of 150 because that would subsequently mean the trend is completely broken, right? We did break this trend line here that's now invalidated. We're going almost like in a flag sideways pattern, but I really wanna see Meta start appreciating faster along with Amazon, right? These two big caps are gonna be the ones that dictate if we're really gonna get that true rally phase in December with Google, Amazon, Meta basically being down in the dumps, they really have the potential to rally, especially with momentum stalling, but I do believe that there's possibility of a rally. Now we have to be cautious to understand if we are breaking lows, then subsequently the S&P and NASDAQ are not reflected and we need to adjust accordingly. Again, I will keep you guys updated in the weekly video for that, right? And we got big stocks like Tesla that seem to just be hitting new all-time highs and hitting 52-week highs like no tomorrow. So we gotta keep an eye on this momentum is gonna fail. Is Palantir momentum gonna fail? And subsequently, are other things going to start breaking, right? And with that, guys, we're gonna conclude today's session for the levels. And we're gonna jump over to the debate section where we're gonna talk about Google, the Fed, everything and more. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that and I'll be back in just a sec. So I figure we start off with looking at some of the news that's coming out this week and the bear sentiment is at a peak. Everyone doesn't have a 2% week, 3% week and it's like, NVIDIA is gonna fall, Google is gonna be broken up, then the world, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's like we, we step one second into bad news, the Fed's not gonna cut, right? And the market's just like, to crank the dial up on bad news. What, what, do, what do you think is going to happen? So I got a few questions because I have not been at all when it comes to like, I've not been with the market since uh, so Thursday. Been under a rock. Yeah, since like okay. Thursday. So um, 
I mean, I thought we had a pretty good week on Friday. I, I thought we had a pretty good day on Friday. Well, and if you... is it official that the Fed is not going to cut rates? No, 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 no. So, like, when they got the data that uh, we can go back to the exact data for this uh, previous week. And mm -hmm. it's pretty, I wouldn't say bad, right? Like, if we look at the Thursday data, you had the Fulfilling Manufacturing Index kind of shrink a little bit. You also had the... Um, Michigan expectations and consumer expectations come out like there was it was mm -hmm. mixed right but if we look at the net speculative positions for the S&P it's basically um, it's gone up week over week uh, they're not at that crazy high level right they did trim some of their positions after that most recent like dump uh, going back to the Ukraine stuff mm -hmm. and if we look at it it's like okay so like you had Ukraine escalation everyone kind of freaked out calm back down then you had the Google news that the Google's trying to basically like tear Google apart where it was the, the government worst case scenario. That the government. Yeah. So Google okay. basically, um, the DOJ plan is the worst case scenario for Google. Um, the reason is because they basically want to ban Google completely from the market for five yeah. years. So the Whoa, stock, what? Yeah, yeah, for five years, Google can't touch the market. So obviously their stock basically went. How would that, but is it, but that would, that would go against so many laws. It's not even funny. Yeah. But that's the DOJ. Okay, again, remember DOJ stupidity, change of administration, all that. Right. So Google stock basically took a dumpster fire dive uh, from the recent highs down 9%. But here's the thing. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is to me a buying opportunity because you, you number one, you got the 50 and the 200 holding up. You got a Doge candle consolidation of the price. It's back in this region right here where we basically had a massive amount of buying opportunity. And let's let's be frank, right? The same way like I look at Nvidia, the same way I look at Google. Is Google going to get broken up and not exist in the coming years? Mind you, the company's worth two trillion dollars. Two trillion dollars yeah. buys you a lot of lawyers. Yeah. They can spend the next decade dragging this out through a court yep. before the DOJ even gets a hold of anything, right? Yes, they had a court decision that they had to um, against them. But number one, Google has enough money to, number one, appeal it. Number two, they kind of went along with it because they're like, okay, like if we have to split the company up into two, no one really cares. But the DOJ basically came out and went completely off the rails with this crazy ask of let's break Google, up, right? So they basically blasted it saying um, it's wildly overbroad, basically, you know, we gotta love the government for being overbroad about everything. And right. the company basically said, this is so far outside what the judge allowed you to do that it's not even remotely close to the, the ruling. So now they're obviously gonna have to fight it on all this. But I find it fascinating because it's like, when Google kind of benefits from the government, it, it's like everything is hunky dory. But then when the shoes on the mm -hmm. other foot, it's like, oh no, a, a government bad. It just I find that amusing. Well, to be fair, it is going significantly more. It is significantly going a lot more than what, as you said, than what um, the the judge said to begin with. And I'm wondering if um, the next administration, if that DOJ will continue this. I think they're going to use it as a bargaining chip for okay. like the internet bill of rights. They're basically going to say to Google, like we can either spend the next four years making your life miserable, or you can basically do this and profit more, right? Like right. here's the carrot, here's the stick. Which one do you want? That would I be something like, that Trump would do. That would be something that Trump would do, it's honestly. Like any, anyone with negotiation would understand that, right? And also like Google's not in a position to basically say, if it's offered the carrot, especially because of fiduciary responsibility, they're one of the top companies in the world by market cap. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to magically be like, no, we're not going to take it. Right? They're going to take the deal. The same right. way like the DOJ and the EU now is going after Apple. And here's the weird thing that a lot of people aren't understanding is with Apple, Google and all this stuff from like that's going on with the EU and Meta. A Trump administration will protect them because Trump's going to be like, look, if you play ball with me, I'm going to go wreck the EU for you, right? Like all this stuff that they're trying to do to you because of censorship or you're not doing this enough. I'm going to tell them to go straight, you know, what off 
Or and yeah. basically, this is the guy that said, if you're not going to pay, I'm not going to exit. I'm going to exit NATO. Do you not think he's going to come basically be like, okay, if you don't, if you don't leave these companies alone, I'm going to not support you anymore. Yeah, like, no, he does have the negotiating tactic uh, and yeah. the negotiating. He's he's if 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 this does occur, deal. yeah, he will be negotiating so from a position of, of strength. It's so art of, art of the deal style, right? And mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. like I said, Google right now to me, and I had to flip the position that I was in for Google uh, because mm -hmm. I was like, um, I didn't want it would have went in the money, but I'm like, I was so I kind of took a loss, but I, and I'll get the money back if this next position works out. Google finding a bottom, like a double bottom right here, is extremely bullish. This is basically a 10% discount on Google. Nice. Buy more. Yeah. The same way, like <laughs> I said in the beginning of the video, if you're worried about downturns and volatility, buy 100 shares of a company, sell damn calls, and cry me a river two years down the road. Because guess what? Yep. The same question, like when we talk about NVIDIA, right? Just going into brief. And then we'll go back to the Fed. If, do you believe NVIDIA is not going to continue profiting like a crazy train? Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to continue. Everyone that's saying like, oh, the next two quarters, guess what? That means I they've been saying that before. I get to buy shares for cheaper. I get to sell more calls against it. And when this thing hits $1,000 a share again, becoming like the fucking freaking $6 trillion company, because it's probably going to be the first one to to four, right? Google and Apple, I'm mean, sorry, Google and Nvidia are neck and neck, right? Like by market cap, if we look, Nvidia is still number one, but then the margin's narrowing. So Nvidia is uh, 3.48, Apple is 3.47. So literally, a smidge, a smidge is keeping the competition, and all it's going to take. And both of these are primed to run, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, that they're they're just inching they're inching to run right and you got microsoft you got amazon google like the buying opportunity in this sector right here google meta tesla well i don't know about tesla right uh, well, well tesla's up in the air for me but google meta microsoft amazon especially like it's just buying opportunity like no tomorrow especially with chips kind of been down in the dumps like amd mm -hmm. has been slaughtered recently along with mm -hmm. like the sentiment of, but like if you look at smci the thing is up again it's like it, it, the second any good news comes out for any of these companies, it's going to be a banger for them, right? Yeah, but absolutely. Absolutely. Jumping, jumping back to the good old uh, man in charge upstairs, a good old pal, right? You know, uh, the expectation of rate cuts and everything is going to be... It's near 50-50. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter because they haven't broken anything yet. And guess what we have this week? Uh, PC, I'm assuming. And I guarantee you this is going to be a 100% rate cut by the end of that week. Really? We have one of the most craziest Wednesdays I have seen in two years. Oh, it's Wednesday. It's oh, Wednesday no, no, when no, PC no. Hold is. On, hold on. Okay. What do you think is on Wednesday besides PCE? I'm not sure. We got a landslide of data. So, Monday, kind of chill. We don't really got much. We got a couple bond auctions, housing prices, consumer confidence on Tuesday. That's like the light news day of the week. Mm -hmm. And we do have minutes on Tuesday. So that's going to be the prime <clears throat> thesis, right? Markets mm -hmm. need something to... Oh, and Wednesday is a low volume day. So we're already primed to is, have... A is, it a half, is it a half trading day? No, but usually all the big money leaves. They go gotcha. on holiday early. Remember, all the big gotcha. traders are going on holiday. So Mar what, that favors bullishness. It favors right. bullishness because if you're shorting something, they're going to put stops. And then when they blow through those stops, it just you know triggers more. So one, we got core PC prices. We don't have expectations yet. We got core adorable good orders, GDP preliminary, GDP sales, initial jobless claims, Chicago PMI, core PCE index, home data, uh, personal spending, and oh. yeah, it, it, and Atlanta Fed GDP and Fed minute, uh, Fed FOMC minutes again. I don't know why that <laughs> is, but I think they're released on Wednesday traditionally, right? It's always the Wednesday following. So I think the first Tuesday is a typo. But you have all that crammed into one low volume trading day. What do you think is going to happen? I say 2% day. You say a 2% day on Wednesday. I think, I think you have the capability because the market, again, Let's jump to fear and greed for a quick second. Okay. With Let's this do that. Down, yeah. down week, with you took the Google down, you took Amazon down, you took NVIDIA down in the sense of like they, they didn't have bullish weeks. 
you only managed to tick up. You didn't manage to actually tick in from neutral to fear, right? There's no fear in the market. If we look at the market momentum, it's greedy. Stock price strength, the, the, the stocks haven't had a strong breath in a very long time because it's been concentrated in most of the bigger cap stocks and the second they have any like downward sentiment they're like okay we're fading but put the call ratio and market volatility and safe haven demand junk bond demand everything is just pointing in one dang direction and these two things like fear on strength and breath can easily turn back up if you get any catalyzed events aka so PCE prices. PCE. Also, let me. I don't know. I don't know if you said that as like a as like a incorrect saying, but uh, it, it was not a down down week at all. Well, for the markets, it, it was video. up. No, it, no. The S and P five hundred on the five day was up one point six percent. Yes, spy. I'm talking about the bigger caps, the magnificent seven. They weren't having the greatest week. I mean, they weren't having. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. They weren't having the the one two percent kind of gains, but I mean. Apple yeah, gained 2.16, Microsoft gained half a percent, Nvidia was basically flat. Um, you know, That's the Google was, was down four. Make. Their worst days are flat, right? Like you right. weren't the bears. Again, like I say with this, I see what you mean now. I like see what you mean. Seeking alpha, right? Like you have why Neo could double. Like you got like crazy stocks. Nvidia results, two major flaws. Rivian, don't be fooled by the market. Palantir hype has gone too far. I know right. you just did a video on Palantir, and uh, Ray yes. Dalio just bought Palantir. Oh boy! So guess wow. what I'm gonna probably land up doing? Buying Palantir. <sighs> I'm tempted. I, You're I gonna buy 100 shares and then just because let me tell you something about Palantir. Let me tell you something about Palantir. I think Palantir has the fundamentals of Amazon back in like the 2000s. Jeez. So I'm just curious. put that into perspective. Uh, Palantir stock is in bubble territory. That's like the most incorrect statement considering Ray Dalio just bought it. Like, yeah. this guy doesn't buy bubbles. This guy doesn't to lose be money. To be fair, I did do a discount of free cash flow on it, and I did get, you know, 20 bucks for the company. It's not, not 64. But the fundamentals do look very, very good. So I just think it's a little bit overvaluated right now. Yeah, but it's also like if you look at the chart, right? So l looking at it real quick, uh, yes, it's extremely exponential, but I would also like to present another said stock that looks exponential, and it is the seventh or eighth largest cap stock in the world. Netflix, Netflix? about to hit a thickened thousand again. Woo! But, yeah, it's like, and earnings are coming up in January, so get ready for the 10 to 1 split like NVIDIA with Netflix. Earnings are coming out in January, meaning we're going to see the, the, this, Q4, so Santa Claus rally earnings. So yeah, well, here it's, it's funny you mentioned Santa Claus rally. Like if you look, let's look at the top seven, right? L let's look at Meta, down, Google, like I showed you, down, Microsoft, yep. down, Apple, starting to get bullish, right? Like it's in that bullish territory. I actually bought in on Friday on Apple. Uh, but then you also have to think of Apple, uh, Warren Buffett selling all of those shares. Yeah, but the thing is, Buffett could be just transitioning to another thing, right? It's it's True. one of those things that Trump is the biggest monkey wrench in the universe because if yeah. you the, the whole underpinning of the yield curve that I never thought of until the damn election, and I feel stupid for thing, uh, uh, saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. We're gonna have words, my friend. Afterwards, that's funny. Um, that's funny. Yeah, it's that's like, funny. Hey, hey, Look you, at that. You don't, you don't get to claim you're right until it crosses this line. <laughs> watch it cross on Monday. Watch it just loop go like loop de loops. Boom. Yeah. So you know, it'd be wouldn't it be funny that the greatest inversion basically gets nullified by the government having spending cut like crazy? That'd be wouldn't awesome. Wouldn't that actually. be the story of a lifetime? Yeah. So it's just, I find, I find it interesting, right? You have, we have to look at the warning signs, right? We have to keep looking at the warning signs. We have to keep looking at the reverse repo, right? To basically be like, hey, this is where stuff can get concerning. But even with the volatility that has been in bonds this week, where bonds were kind of just jumping up and down everywhere, it's been a flat week on the reverse repo, sitting around that 200K. Uh, Fed expectations have been shifting, but this thing has not actually changed trajectory in any meaningful fashion. 
Um, you're also going to have a new treasury secretary that's a former hedge fund um, billionaire that is basically going to be very interesting to see how they tackle the reckless spending of the government, right? And they only got about two more months of reckless spending before uh, it's time to pay the bill because the debt ceiling is coming around in February. So you're gonna have all these company earnings going into January, which is the Q4 Santa Claus rally earnings. You have the financial sector basically booming, right? Like if we yeah. anyone's looked at- um, JP Morgan, City, Wells them, Fargo. Wells them. Fargo, that was the surprising one, Wells Fargo. So let's take, let's take a look, right? Well, uh, Wells Fargo, just astronomical, City. Like just going through any of these charts, it's just like bloop. It's yeah, it's, it, it's just it's insane. Like Mastercard, Visa, Deutsche Bank, right? Like, well, they had or they had a catalyst probably. CHW. If you look up CHW, that that one's gone up an insane amount as well. CHW. And sorry, sorry, SCHW. Sorry, oh, SCHW. Yeah. Uh, w. Yeah. Like they all look the same. Yeah, the whole all the financial sector, right? So the health of the financial sector is extremely, extremely strong. Um, we can look at XLF, right? Well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say the health of based, the financial sector, but the, the, but the chart. charts, the based graphs, the chart, right? Uh, like if yeah. we look at this, right? Massive, massive boom coming out of twenty four, right? And you got re, uh, regional banks kind of being bullish again, so they're coming back to their previous high before NYCB uh, section, right? So yep. it's not. I, I still hold a concerned phase about stuff because I'm like, we've seen where people pile into the market and it's extremely um, uh, like bear trappish. But mm -hmm. if you have like, for example, like TLT, right? Kind of forming that like higher low almost right here. So the question is, what is the Fed gonna do? What are minutes gonna show? Is inflation going to come back with a vengeance or is it basically gonna be one of those big nothing burger events? And with inflation, like, because Inflation we don't... is showing that it is going back up, if anything, stagnant. Yeah, but stagnation is, like, if we look at crude, right? The expectation for crude, yellow is the um, previous prices for the year ago month that I have set up. And we've been mm -hmm. transacting relatively in the lower part outside that region. Now, wow. so me, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna get one way or another, but it, it's still providing negative pressure on inflation. And right. also now you're gonna get that stagnation phase, I think. I don't think that and then, you're gonna get that. But it could also be interesting, right? If people, more creation of goods, right? If you get this populist agenda that basically drives the creation yeah. of goods because you haven't necessarily seen degradation of everything going out there. Yep. And be, and the bulls are still willing to buy. Like, case in point, like, I think you covered Nike, right, recently? Yes. Uh, yes. And I and bought and I bought 100 shares of Nike as well. And they just pumped up on Friday. Yeah, they had a nice 3% uh, pump. So I'm like, no. Yeah. You look at some of these names, like um, you got your AVGO, right? Coming to maybe a bottoming phase. You got Netflix that's just doing crazy stuff. Tesla also bought that, some AVGO as well. Te Tesla just going. Uh, I know someone asked, is Boeing finally at a bottom? Maybe. Like it's looking promising right now, right? Like you had this big capitulation phase right here. And then you kind of like starting to bottom out here. We have to see if it gets back above 50, how it reacts with this area of uh, 551. But definitely there, there's plenty of opportunity out there. One of the bigger plays of the week for me was the Russell. Um, bought in at the low and this thing's just cranking. Like Russell is probably the most undervalued opportunity right now, considering small caps have basically been dumpster fired. They mm, like- Right, the, yes they have. Yes, and they have, as yeah. much as Tom Lee will say, like, you know, 20% rallying the Russell, still waiting, Tom, but I will definitely play Russell. I will keep an eye and be probably covering the Russell more because it's the most undervalued of the indexes. It's not, this it doesn't have NVIDIA, right? So it doesn't have that ability to just keep pumping like crazy. You know, Dow, right. NASDAQ, S&P all have NVIDIA, but right. now it's going to be, are we going to keep pushing right are we going to get the sand calls rally and this is the sector that probably has the most opportunity for growth yeah i i, I honestly and do agree with that statement also, because the um profit taking that is most likely going to occur from this uh bitcoin hitting that 100k um, did it really did it officially hit it One hundred thousand one hundred and seventy dollars 
Wow. Sure. Not a closing basis, Congratulations. I know it's gone down. I think it now it's like at 97 or something. 99. Um, How much? 99. 99. But it doesn't matter. That's a huge milestone to have love, them broken. Like it, I would love for this thing to come back down to like, let's say 75, right? Find a bottom, right? Or go yep. sideways now and then allow yep. accumulation then push higher, right? It definitely, yep. again, you have the it, happening coming. Okay. No, the happening already passed, my yeah, guy. Sorry. That's, that's next. Rollover. You have to wait four more years for that. Yeah, contract um, rollover. Sorry, I'll, because this yep. is Bitcoin futures, so I can. It's always contract rollover. Yeah, no, I, I think when it comes to Bitcoin, we're, what we're going to see is we're going to see something similar to what we've seen before, where it hits a new high, then it comes back down, you yeah, know, this. thirty, forty thousand dollars, bounces there for a few months, and it just goes yeah, woof, well, so like, passes thirty yeah, percent. So thirty percent from the high would be rough. Seventy. Seventy. Seventy from a thousand from a hundred thousand, that's seventy. So, yeah. So let's say you you come back even to the gap, right? You come back to the gap at eighty one. So people are gonna buy this thing up, right? You're not yes. gonna get the uh like massive drop down opportunity that previously was. I agree. I agree. Uh that's pretty much it, right? Like we don't have expectations, so I'll probably cover them in the Tuesday video when we get these expectations. Uh, for PCE. Previously, core came out at 2.7. I expect straight flat across. I don't expect it to necessarily go down. Um, I don't expect it to go up either, but we could be surprised either way. Um, if it ticks down, obviously you're going to have a crazy day because that's the bullish momentum the market has been looking for. And if we don't get any crazy escalations in you know other countries like Lebanon and the middle of Ukraine. Uh, like Ukraine, I think it's going to be pretty calm and collective. Um, I love how Russia was basically uh, saying that like, oh, we're going to just take this opportunity to test this missile out. We're not even going to, we're not going to put a payload on it. We're just going to still, still terrifying though. Oh, still absolutely is, but terrifying. It's like, if you read between the lines, like Boone's like, okay, you, you, you dummy go, go, go away. I want to go deal with orange man. I guess, but yeah, I don't, he I, literally I, said he wants to deal with Trump. Not by I know. I know. I, I saw that tweet. I saw I, that. I, I saw that. that. Post. I, I just love it. Yep. But it's like, the whole world is coming back to sanity. And I think it's going to be, remember what happened in 2016? The rally of 26 to 2019 was insane. That was good. It was and one of the best I rallies. Hope we yeah. get it again. I hope that we get another one of those four years that kicks off an insane, insane rally. Well, we shall see. We shall yep. see. Only time will tell. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one. We'll be uh, have the video for the latest expectation of the Santa Claus rally posted over right over here. So make sure you guys check that one out. And as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button down below. Also, we have the Discord linked in the description below as well. So you can join and interact with us where we post a bunch of trades and ideas down there. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.